getting started When I hit a wall You just walk through When I face a mountain You are the maker So it's gotta move When I'm out of faith You are still faithful When I'm at my worst You are still good In all of my questions You are the answer In all points to you Cause you're the God of the breakthrough When I'm breaking down You'll be working way through And there's no way out This one thing I know You're still on your Oh, so what 
Welcome to the Christian Center Church Podcast. If you'd like to sow into this ministry, you can do so at the link below. Thank you for joining us, and we hope the message today will bless you. This morning, I want to minister a little while, whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. Now, that's an amazing statement right there, whatever it takes, amen. You know, people are pretty strong to get whatever they want whenever they, they do whatever it takes. You know, I mean, you, don't you remember, you stay up all night and go to the bar, amen, and whatever it takes for me to make the day, wash my face so I can go back tonight. Oh, y'all don't know what, I mean, y'all didn't get in that trap. I'm glad, amen. But when I, I, was, raised, I was raised around men, that's what they did. They, they, did, they uh, uh, bid, uh, built pipelines all day long and, and chased women at night, amen. I don't know how many of them they caught, but they talked big, amen. And it's amazing how much people will put effort in what they want. Whatever it takes, whatever it takes to get her attention, whatever it takes to get his attention, whatever it takes to get this, I'll take another job. Whatever it takes. Isn't it amazing? The stuff you'll do, whatever it takes. I'll walk, I'll walk, I'll walk down there and tell him myself, whatever it takes. <laughs> In the negative, amen, sometimes. But whatever it takes, it's not foreign to people. But what we need to do is have a godly whatever it takes. We need to have a scriptural whatever it takes. We need to have a, a faith in Christ and what he's, whatever it takes, amen. If it takes a, waiting a little bit, let, let's do whatever it takes. If it takes giving, let's do whatever it takes. If it takes just, just being silent, let us do whatever it takes. You know, people walk in the power and work in the power of whatever to get whatever they want. And people all over the world work the same way. Whatever it takes to get what they want. You know, whatever it takes. You know, some people guilt tripping to get whatever it takes. And they, they'll, they'll be guilt tripping. They'll trip you out there. They, and that's when one tries to make you feel responsible or guilty for your actions or something you did or didn't do. Sometimes people will use that. Whatever it takes. If it takes to manipulate people emotionally, whatever it takes. Come on. Some people, whatever it takes, they lie. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. People want to whatever have a tendency to lie so they can control others. And you know what people, most people that lie well, you know what they do? They, they avoid circumstances and consequences of what they do. Whatever it takes. If, you know, by the time he said, well, you know, I, I, this was, I, I really didn't lie. It was a little white lie. Now, I've heard of white lies but never heard of a black lie. Now, I heard of a bald-faced lie, but I never heard of a, be a bearded truth. <laughs> whatever it takes. Have you got to lie about it, work about it, work it in it, whatever it takes. Isn't it amazing that people can work that, but you can work it in a godly way. But sometimes people want, you know, that, that whatever it takes. You know, some people use flattery, whatever it takes. <laughs> you, know, you know, some people say flattery will get you absolutely everywhere <laughs> some people know you know flattery is good and, and you know and if you're going to uh, challenge somebody and if you're going to say something to somebody if you're going to correct somebody you do it's nice to start out with a compliment it's nice to start out with something nice it's it's good to say that that's not true that's not what we call flattery flattery is just stating the facts when you uh, tell somebody compliment somebody flattery has an idea behind it i am tell you, some people, if you flatter them just a little bit, come on now. It gains an emotional hold in their lives. And, and, and what they do, they, they do whatever. So people are lie. People are, people are guilt trip people. They, they'll use flattery. And, you know, and people actually use uh, violence and fear and threats against Forget whatever. I never did understand that. How people act like God is, the, is running the mafia. You know when the mafia 
moves into town, your windows in your store get broke out. But somebody comes by and tells you for 20 a month, we'll see your windows are not knocked out. <laughs> so they give $20 a month, a month, they extort that, and they get $20. But people think the same thing with God. They think he brings sickness and disease and hard things into the life. And they start blaming it on God. Now, what would it be a man that make you sick and then make you want to come to the place to use his word to get healed up? That kind of sounds like the mafia. In other words, I won't knock your windows out if you do that 20 a month. <laughs> Whatever it takes. You know, what? some people put God in a bad light because they're unwilling to do whatever it takes. You know, sometimes you just got to stop. Sometimes you got to pray. Sometimes you just got to give it up. Sometimes you just got to pick your battles. The older I get, I try to figure out if I can win them or not. Can you say amen? But I want you to know I've been pretty good at when I agree. Mm. <laughs> My wife looked at me the other day when we were not arguing. We were going back and forth with the conversation. And she looked at me and she said, you just want to be right. I said, baby, I can't help it. I'm right. That's the end of it. <laughs> yeah, wink, wink. <laughs> no, it wasn't bad at all. You know, and, and when people begin to get to that place, and, and people, no matter if they're threatening, lying, flattering, whatever they're doing, whatever it takes, why can't we just turn that around and get to that place that whatever it takes, we receive from the Word of God? I'm going to act that way no matter what it takes. When you act and out, I'm going to act like he wants me to act, can you say? Whatever it takes, whatever it takes for me to have a good day, I'm going to go ahead and have that. Whatever it takes. So, well, listen to me. You're in charge of your own feelings, your own life. Your own, you didn't know. I didn't know. I was 40 some years old when I found out I was in charge of my own feelings. I go where I want to, feel like I want to. She's just making, he's just making, they're just making me feel that. God never made me feel that. Come on, you got to weigh it up. People use whatever to manipulate people. Let me tell you, God will always show out the manipulators. God will always show out people walking, working on the other side, on the underside. Why? Because God's a revealer of truth. Amen. You know, most of us have, have seen, you ever seen people that don't want to do the whatever? What they want to do is blame people. Anybody, anything, everything, everybody, no matter what it is, I ain't, then that's their whatever. Whatever it is, I, I have to get to the place I'm not responsible. Whatever it takes for me to not have to do. Whatever it takes for me to not look back. Whatever it takes for me to be the victim. Yeah. We going over here. I love you guys. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you're not one of those excuse people, are you? <laughs> look back at him and tell him, say, yeah, not today. <laughs> there you go <laughs> getting healed on the front row <laughs> you know our whatever need needs to receive from Jesus every person has a different way of, of doing it and, and yet it's the same sometimes if you just wait on the Lord amen and sometimes if, if you move now can you say amen I've seen times that things were urgent, and I, I felt like I needed to go. I, need to, I felt like I needed to do that, you know. And sometimes the whatever is an urgency, and sometimes the wait is to wait on the Lord. I say, wait on the Lord. Sometimes I tell you, waiting is not easy, but the whatever sometimes is just waiting on the Lord. Amen. And, and I agree with you. He's the latest man I know to be on time. I just, the latest man I know to always be on time. They don't feel like it all the time. Even when it don't feel it, it's working out, amen. Even when it don't look like it, it's working out. And y'all thank me for that song again this morning, too. I made special requests to that. <laughs> Glory. I went to the top, amen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, you know, the key is, 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 the key is to uh, do what he says and, and have an idea. You know, how can we know the plan and will of God if we don't know the word of God? How can we know the will and the plan of God if we have never heard, never investigated his will or his plan for our lives? Amen. We, we ought to get to that place that, that, that we're willing to do that. You know, and, and some of you know, some of you may need to pray. Some may need to fast. Some, some may need to walk. Some of you may need to run. Some may need to be carried. You may need to carry someone. Whatever, with, without excuse, do whatever that needs to be done. And, you know, we jam ourselves up sometimes, you know, we... 
we do ourselves. Like some people can't receive the Lord if they don't get a goose bump. They'll get it up, no goose bump. <laughs> Whatever it takes. <laughs> you know, some people think they got to have a goose bump. Now, it's fine if you got to have a goose bump. But I want you to know they don't come in cartons like eggs, can you see? <laughs> Brother Jerry, I just can't afford a cart and a goose bump. <laughs> but, you know, people just uh, get in there. Uh, they focus on the problem and not the answer, Jesus. Can somebody say amen? You know, word people learn to receive of him. Word people learn to look for him. Word people learn to say if that's something he would do. I, I, I told my wife one time, somebody told me something God said. I said, he didn't say that. She said, oh, Jerry, you can't say that. I said, God didn't say that. She said, why? And I quoted this word. So I said, this would nullify this scripture if God said that. God will never say anything to me, Brother Steve, Sister Brenda, none of us in here, Pastor Jose, nobody in here that's against his word. Now, some people can use that whatever, you know, whatever you wrong about that. <laughs> and you may not want to use the word, but don't misuse the word. Don't say God said something when he didn't say it. The Bible says not to add to. You know why people don't want to do the word or life pressures and things? People are, are so full. They don't have time for other things because we're working this out instead of that. Now the pressure of life and things are coming on, and we can't do that because we're stuck here. You know how we got stuck there? We allowed life and the devil and the flesh and the world and our own ideology get us stuck there. And we begin to think this is what you got. What we need to find out what God said about the situation. I've heard people got all kind of plans, but what kind of plans does God have in there for, you know? You know, just whatever it takes. You know, whatever it takes. You may have to pray. You may have to dance. You may have to sing. You may have to get along. Whatever it takes. You know, some people, I don't want to do that, you know. Some people don't want to be responsible for their own spiritual life. They want somebody else to be responsible for it. I want you to pray for them. Somebody told me about their kids. I said, when you quit praying for them and start allowing them to see where they are, now, let me tell you, I, I don't care whose kid you got. I don't care, a grown 30, 45, 50, or 90-year-old man. If you keep putting a pillow in front of his head in front of that beam over there, it's not going to bother him much. But when you remove that, when you move that pillow. But you see, some kids, oh, my goodness, want you to do the whatever. Some people want you to do the whatever, but they don't want to do what they're supposed to be doing. Amen. You know, you can do the whatever and, and, and whatever turns your faith on. You know, if you need to sing, get on sing. Whatever gets your faith going. You need to fast, do whatever you need to fast. If you need to shout, shout. If you need to run around the building, I'll hold the door open. Let me know when you're coming. He's coming around the door too. Let's get him in here. We'll try to help you. Whatever it takes. Some people say, well, but yeah, uh, that, that, I don't believe that will take for me. Well, it may not take it for you. But it may take it for them, you'd say, whatever it takes. You know, sometimes you just got to forgive people and walk on whatever it takes. <laughs> sometimes you just got to be wrong even though you feel like you're right. Whatever it takes. <laughs> whatever it takes. You know, uh, you know, life gets pressure in it and makes things bigger. How I many of you know that? You know, people want change, but most people don't want to receive what causes the change. Most people want it change the way they want it. Not the way it should be or where the word of God tells us it ought to be. And they get it whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. You know, at Philippians 4 and 19 through 20, Philippians 4 and 19 through 20, you know, if we're willing to move from where we are by grace, the power of God will move us to the next place. Philippians 4 and 19, he said, But my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And now unto God and our Father be glory forever. Amen. You know what he said? That, that Jesus is the supply. Now, now, instead of worrying about that stuff, you got to understand Jesus can do the whatever. Jesus can do the whatever. Now, I'm looking, I'm going to be real honest with you. Do, 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 do you mind if I be honest with you? There, there's some things I wanted I didn't get my way. There's some things I'd rather have in my rathers. It'd be this, it didn't work. But you know, after a while, I found out where God was working and he knew what he was doing. To my surprise, God knew what he was doing. How about you, amen? Now, I mean whatsoever. Now, now here in 19, here, the 19th verse of Philippians uh, 4, 19, it says, shall supply all. You know what that word all is? It means whole. It means thoroughly. Now, I love this because the, the Holy Ghost will work with you. 
the word actually means whatever. <laughs> or whoever. So the psalmist said, he said, but my God shall supply, come on somebody, <laughs> whatever. Now you don't have to talk God into it. He's the whatever God. He's over this stuff. He built this, made this. He did all things by his glory. All things consist by him. He's the doer thereof. Can you say amen? And he shall supply all your needs according to his riches. All it means whatsoever, thoroughly, whatever. I like it. Can you say amen? Now, you know what a need is here. When it says need, most people think it's money. Most people think it's that. But really, what is, the word need means shall so whatsoever in the an occasion, whatsoever in a demand, whatsoever in a requirement, whatsoever in business, whatsoever in lack, I love this, whatsoever necessary. That's what the words mean. That's what, that's what he's telling us. But people lie, they cheat, they, they do things. Have you ever done that, brother Jeff? Well, I'm sure I have. I see a little bad boy sometimes. I just look at him. You know, he's bad. He's jumping. He's, he's doing something. Mama can't get him. And daddy can't get him. He's doing something. But you get to him, you can't do nothing but laugh and love on him. He's a bad boy. And you look at that little boy, and some of y'all think he's going to prison. I look at him. I said, preacher, prophet, man of God. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Your need, your occasion, whatsoever is necessary. All you need, whatever is necessary. Now, I got to believe, I got to understand, I got to get past people. I got to get past religion. I got to get past mistakes. Oh, I got to get past what they said. I got to get past my past. You got to get past your spouse. You, got, you can't blame her, not for whatsoever. Come on now. Yeah, you got it. Some, you, you can't bl you know, some people are blaming uh, your ex-relationships. Some people blaming failed marriages. Some people bring it, blaming over them jobs. Let me tell you what. Whatever it is, people are blaming all kind of stuff, just matter whatever it is, and that's their idea why they're going to fail. And very few people blame it on the old man. Blame it on the old nature. People blame it on me. It's them. It don't matter. It's them. And what you you, you got to get past that, you see, because you'll get stuck in the whatever. You'll be easily manipulated with the whatever. Isn't it amazing, the one who turned the universe, the one that hung the stars, the one that said being it was, we check with him sometimes. Man, you know, we get him in, usually when we got the cart in the ditch. Hey, y'all listen. That's true enough. Go with me to... Mark 5. Y'all ready? Y'all getting anything this morning? Amen. Amen. I won't get through today. See, I might be having the same thing for supper next week <laughs> or lunch next week. Amen. Hmm. Little boy said he didn't want that for dinner. She said, Good, he'll have it for supper. <laughs> you can have it for supper. Mark 5 25. Mark 5 25. I love this story. I love this story because it's a seriousness of it and there's things to overcome and there's some whatevers in the way. And the certain woman which had an issue of blood for 12 years, can you imagine that? Life force running out of you 12 years. Can, can, look at me just a second before I move on. Can, can you imagine having a problem 12 years and that's the only problem before you? Ever, you look in your clothes, you find a problem. You get, you, you get where you go, you get a problem. Now, you got to know this woman was ostracized. You got to know that, that, that while this is going on, she can't hang around with the crowd. She can't come to church and hang out. She can't go, she can't, she can't go to the chicken house with us. She's unclean. She can't go. So every day she, she is there, you know. People are stuck in real big problems. Pe people are stuck in stuff for years. Can you imagine 12 years being stuck in that? And, and we overcome something and we cry and complain because there's something else coming this way. Honey, I'd rather be going through overcoming something else as being stuck in something for 12 years. 12 is a governmental number. You see, it becomes Lord of her life. It becomes what's running her. It comes what, not, not, by her, not by her doing, but by where she was at. And she needed to seek the whatever, Jesus, said, I supply all your needs. All your needs is the whatever in every situation. Come on. Now, I believe you give up too soon. I believe you walk off. I said, well, brother, you give me scripture. I well, thank you. I think I'll do that. He said that you shall reap if you faint not. 
said, don't stop doing good. He said, you'll reap if you faint not. So you can do all the good you want, and you faint, you won't get it. You know what the faint was about? The faint was doing the whatever. <laughs> the wrong whatever. Twelve years. And it suffered many things of many physicians. And spent all she had and was nothing to better, but rather grew worse. Now, some people, some people are doing the whatever, and they're not getting any better. Now, it's evident. If you've been doing the same thing for 12 years, you've been doing the same thing for 12 months, been doing the same thing for 12 days, been doing the same thing for 120 minutes. Come on. Come on. You know, the word here, uh, suffered, means painfully. It means you know, and the idea of many things with this position because, you know, how many of y'all believe she wanted to be well? She must have wanted to be well. She's showing up physicians. She's showing up. She's spending her money. She, she's trying to be better. People have tried whatever, but Jesus is still the answer. You can spend it what you got. You can hold on to it. So you can do that in reverse. Stay sick and hold the money and never try to get healed. It's no different than one not trying to get healed and the one that don't know where to get healed. Man, and when she heard of Jesus, now, now, you know, that makes a difference what you hear about Jesus. Now, now, it's fixing to change to whatever in your life if you hear about Jesus. Now, this here and I'm talking about Jesus and not that I heard some name off over here. Now, I heard about Jesus. Now, he, he, he works in people's situation and he healed. I heard that, that he heals. You know, a lot of people just heard he's going to get you. God going to get you. You know, when, when I was growing up, I thought God had a big old stick and a lightning bolt. He hit you with the stick, and sometimes if you're far away, he'd throw it, and then he'd do some kind of Thor thing. He'd throw it up and send it to you. <laughs> if he wanted you that way, he'd say, by the, by, by the, by the breath of his spirit. How many of y'all believe that? Amen. And when she heard of Jesus, when she heard of Jesus, it came to pass behind, look, and touched his garment. Now, now you got to know that, that she came in behind, you know, sometimes people say, well, you know, I, I couldn't get up in the front. You don't need to be up in the front. <laughs> sometimes you need to sleep up in the behind and have your plan and do whatever. Now, listen, to uh oh, can I say that? Yeah, here we go. Sometimes putting yourself last will put you first. But some people are trying to be first and always finding themselves last. But you know what she said? She didn't complain. I don't tell you, my phone is open. Who's working my phone out there? Probably that brother Micah, he's got skill. I want you to leave it alone, brother. <laughs> right now, he's combing all y'all's phones. I got a Micah watcher on mine. I don't know what happened, y'all. And you know what she, it took? It took some effort for her to press. The church said press. It took some effort. You know what that means? That means that what, <laughs> he's describing the situation in the Greek, it's the same word we use for riot. It's the same word we use for company in the riot. It's like they're going and the king is here like we are to be. That, 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 and she, she's going to get in and she come up and she... Well, they want me, the Lord want me up there. And the Lord want me, they call my name out. If that was the Lord want me, he'd know I was sitting on that bitch eating Cheetos last night. God know about it. Yeah, there you go. But you know what the difference was? For she said, now, now, now this is her whatever. She said, for she said, if I may but touch his clothes, I shall be whole. Amen. She said, now I know somebody fixed problems. Now I'm willing to do my part. Amen. Now you got to get past people. You got to get past the crowd. You got to get past the company. You got to get past the riots. Yes. That's the funny thing about company. People who have company come in, the company don't go to church. <laughs> My company's going to be companyless while well, I'm going to church. <laughs> My company ain't going to have no company. <laughs> I'm going to church. <laughs> well, you know, we pray for her, but she don't ever need to bring her to church. Amen. I'm, well, to Brother Jerry, you don't know them. Yeah, I do know them. That's why I'm telling you this morning. I'm talking with you. Amen. And Jesus heard come out. He said, she said, I may but touch 
Get through that press. Get through the, the multitude. Just get through people. And she said, if I may but touch his clothes, I shall be whole. And straight away, the fountain of her blood dried up. And she felt in her body that she was healed of her plague. Do you know nothing happened till she did the whatever? Whatever she needed. Now, now some of you might not need to, to heal up on the issue of blood this morning. Some of you might not need that right there. But let me tell you that getting to him is the answer. Can you say amen? And it's what you're saying inside. She said, I heard about this Jesus. Can you say amen? I heard about this Jesus. Man, the Jesus I heard, you know, when I was, that Jesus was a soft Jesus when I was growing up. He had a little light on his head and he's holding the sheep. The one I'm talking about drive him out of the temple. The one I'm talking about kick tables over. The one I'm talking about, he'd get over here and get some stuff done. And if you need a manly Jesus, he can. And when they got there, they said, why we can't cross here? He said, he said, don't go. He said, okay, if he said, don't go. He's a man of power and authority. All we, what we need to do is get to it. And now just think about it. She's fixing to supernaturally sneak on Jesus with faith. So why is it working for her, brother? Why is it working? Because she's doing the whatever, and she knows. She said, if I may but touch. She said, I don't have to get up and talk with him. I, I don't have to do all. If I may but just touch the hymn. Now, you've got to understand the hymn. The hymn's down here. You, you, the hymn is low. Sometimes you got to position yourself for the blessing. Sometimes you got to position yourself. You got to get to work. Come on. And she said, if I may but touch. And she reached up in there and she, she didn't reach for his wallet. <laughs> Some people reaching for Jesus' wallet. <laughs> I don't know so much about that. Talk to Brother Steve. I learned it from him. <laughs> it said straight away. Did you know that, that nothing in this led us to believe that she was looking for an instant healing? She was looking for a healing. What I'm trying to say. I'm trying to say that she didn't go down, with, down there with specifics to tell him what to do and how to do. You know, but us charismatic leftovers, we got a list. We want it this color. We want it this tall. We want it that long. We want it to weigh 14 pounds. Oh, that's 15 pounds, Lord. Oh, Lord, he didn't answer my prayer. <laughs> Excuse me. You know, but what she said, if I may, if I may, but if I do what I do, he'll do what he does. If I can do what I need to do, he'll do what he does. And she said, if I may, but just touch to him. Hey, things changing. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue or power <laughs> had gone out of him, Turned him, turned him about to the press and said, who touched my clothes? Now, some people said Jesus didn't know that. Do you know what he know? I, I believe Jesus knew who touched him. It was evident because in the next verse or two, we find out that he did. But you know what he's trying to tell us? That it's, un, it's not limited to anybody in the room. Everybody can touch. Everybody it is. And he said, who touched me? Could have been any one of you. Any one of you could. Any one of you can. And power went out, vexion went out. It came and, and caught Jesus' attention. When's the last time with the whatever we had, whatever we were trying to get, that we got Jesus' attention? Well, you see, some of us coming just like we come. And the disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and thou sayest who? He said, Touch me. And he looked around and he saw her that had done the thing, but the woman was fearing or fearing trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell before him and told him all the truth. <laughs> he said, look around, he told his disciples, he told them, he said, well, it could have been anybody. And the disciples looked around and said, it could have been anybody. It was like a riot. It was a crowd of people. People were thawing you. She slipped in and touched him. I don't know, she, she went in uh, three people deep, two people deep, whatever she did, but she went in and she touched and looked around and Jesus saw her, can you say amen? 
And the woman, fearing, knowing, trembling, and fell down before him and told him to. You know what she said? She said, I just won't tell you. She said, I've been having blood for 12 years. I've been to every doctor. I spent everything I had. And she went on. She went on. She, she told him the all. She told him all. She told how she'd been alone for 12 years. She told how she'd been ostracized. She talked about how she'd been set aside. And she said, I said within myself one day, I heard about you. She told him to all, says, I heard about you. And if I could just get in there and touch the hem of your garment, I know inside me that I'll be healed. And Jesus told the woman, go, thy faith has made thee whole. Can you say amen? Well, you know, I think you ought to have a little dignity. I think you ought to stand in the line and wait to get up. No, me, I'm going to sneak in there. I'm going to get in. I, I, I'm going to get it, me. I'm going to get on get after it. Can you say amen? When I was a kid, I loved bananas. Woo, I love bananas. And my mama would buy bananas, and the first thing I'd do, break me off about two or three of them and hide them. <laughs> then my brothers and sisters come in, and we'd do the banana split. They'd get three, I'd get three. I got six. <laughs> oh, y'all don't know. <laughs> Girl, get what she want, boy, get what he want. Can you say amen? I got my bananas, Amen. It looked like your bananas last a long time. Y'all ought not eat them up, all I tell you. I'm five bananas deep. I've got one more left. <laughs> Come on. Sometimes you got to be smarter than what you're working with. You got to position yourself. When them kids are hanging out and running around, I went out there and got them groceries out of the car. I was helping mama. I'd see what was in there. This didn't happen every day. I just won't tell you. This didn't happen every day. <laughs> we go in there and get it, man. But I, I had bananas. <laughs> I did whatsoever to get them bananas. Can you see? <laughs> hmm. You know what? You know the rest of them. They didn't even know. Brother and sister. They didn't know. They didn't know. Brother had six bananas. They had three. They didn't know. <laughs> and I wasn't bragging on it either. Can you say amen? No, let them. They didn't need though, bro. There wasn't none to bid <laughs> But you know, you got to do whatever you got to do. I, 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 did, I, did, I guess I was wrong. I just, I think I've took up for that all these years. <laughs> Never thought it was wrong. <laughs> but you know, in our lower nature, we can figure out so much. In our lower nature, we, 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 we get things done. People do stuff and manipulate and get things done. You, you know, but God's still God. He knows. But you can do it the right way. You, you can come before him with thanksgiving. You come before him and believe, come on, that something's going to happen and things change. Amen. <laughs> Y'all got time just, just a little bit. Amen. <laughs> I'll tell you, I don't know about you, but sometimes my whatever is just to wait. But you know, I found times that I wished I wouldn't have said anything. Miss Bob, I, I, I wished I wouldn't have said that. I said something one day. My wife said, you ought not say that. I said, I don't know about that. <laughs> Sometimes the whatever is just telling the truth. Sometimes the whatever is just being quiet. Sometimes the whatever is you just give a little direction and go on. And, you know, there's a lot of people that you can't tell them what to do. You just got to say what's doing around them and they'll go do it. Because when they find out you said it, they're not going to do it. They're going to do anything but that. They're going to do whatever they want, but not that. Oh, y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Go into Mark 2. Mark, second chapter, not two books of Mark. Did the Frenchman say that, the book of two? <laughs> Mark 2 and 1. He said, again, he entered, talking about Jesus. Now, now we've got to understand what, whatever it takes to help people. Now, now we live in a day that, that, that I talk about the last days. We live in a day that I talk about reaching people. We live in a day that we, we are to smile. We are we are to do something. I went in I went into the dollar store this morning, and I talk, one was talking about being in good mood. I said, "Well, Jesus is my Lord, and I'm going down to church worshiping today." That's that's that's, that's really what's behind it, or something to that effect. She said, oh, "That's such a good idea." Well, it's been a seed sowed. I'm gonna go back next week and invite her. <laughs> you know, sometimes you gotta do whatever. Sometimes you got to take your time, do whatever. Sometimes you got to come in. But we need to be involved in people's lives some way or another. 
And again, he entered into Capernaum. After some days, it was noise that Jesus was in the house. Oh, glory. I preached Jesus in the house one day, amen. And Jesus was in the house time we got through. Can you say amen? But that's the place we need to take people. Well, Jesus is in the house. That's what the whatever we need to be doing. And after some days, it was noise that he was in the house and, and straight away, they were gathered together as much as there was no room. Oh, here we are with no room again. Here's some more of that shoving in again. Here's somebody fitting had to do the whatever again. And there was no room to receive of them. No, not so much about the door. And he preached the word unto them. Oh, my goodness. If, the wor- wor- if we just get hold of what the word's doing, we want stuff and things. Stuff and things. And people look at that, look at all this accomplishment. You're not taking, I just want to let you know now, I don't want to hurt your feelings, but you're not taking that with you when Jesus comes. None of that's gone. We're leaving it all. I don't care if it turns to the planet of the apes when Jesus comes. That they're going to be on their own. Won't bother me. It turned to the uh, uh, valley of the dinosaur. I don't care. And, you know, some people are going to have to come that way to get saved. Did you hear me? I ain't going to get on it too hard. But you know, some people, the only way they're going to get saved is through the tribulation. The Bible speaks to people being saved. You know, they'll be saved in tribulation. They won't get that glorified body till later. And that's where you get into the rewards or before the millennium. And that. Well, if we're going to start debating about it, it don't matter. I, I tell you, that little crown I'm going to get, that little old crown that may look no bigger than a tiara, that little crown I'm going to get, I'm going to cast it before his feet. Now, whatever he wants it, whatever he won't do, I'm with you, whatever you want to do. <laughs> and it was noised in the house. You know, but, but if you're working on your reward, you help people. If you, you want something greater in the future, you, do, you, you don't have to uh, minister to people, don't have to witness to people to go to heaven. But people have to be ministered to that they may go to heaven. What's well, going on? And straight away, there's some men about the door, and so much there's no room to receive, and no, not much about the door. And he preached the word unto them. Oh, my goodness, if we just be after the word. Wouldn't that be amazing? And they came unto him bringing the sick. Now, they say, if we really, you know what he was preaching? He was preaching we heal the sick. You know what he was preaching? That, that he helps people. You know that was evident? He was one, if you could get to him, you may have to sneak up behind him. And t- he's talking about one, if you can get, get to him. It's noise. And he's in the house, and we've been hearing about this Jesus. And they come unto him, bring him one that was sick of palsy, and he bore four. And when they came in, they could not come nigh to him for the press. Somebody said the press. You know, I found out lots of times in the press lays the mess. Can you say amen? People get all worried about this and what somebody said and what they're doing and who's not doing it. And brother, yeah, I think you're. Let me tell you, if God tell you to do whatsoever, ladies, if He tell you to stand on your head, and God really does, your little skirt will stay straight up. Now, if God told you to do that. You can tell if God told her or not. Amen. <laughs> you can tell. <laughs> yeah. And they could not come nigh for the press. Let me tell you what. They some people may hold you out from this stuff. You know why some people never got to Jesus? Y'all, y'all ready? You know why some people never got to Jesus? We never brought them. We never showed the way. I love it when y'all get that quiet. Because you know what they did? I tickled your bone. Amen. <laughs> Oh, maybe it wasn't a tickle bone. Come on. It's good. I love you. How many of you want the truth? How many of you want to be challenged? How many of you want your life to be like Jesus? And when you get there one day, I said, I did say amen, Father. I, I, I was there. Amen. Now, let me tell you, this here Jesus in charge and him being, I, maybe they'll put me over Jesus in charge class 101 because I, I, I know he is. Some of y'all might be in my class. <laughs> I'm going to be teaching. Amen. And when they could not come nigh. See, when they had, a lot of people go home. A lot of people stop with obstructions. Some people stop when things get in their way. And you know what a lot of people say? You know what they say, Brother Joe? They say it must not be God's will. Look like every turn I take is blocked. Look like everything I do is a quick crying. And say, greater is he is in me than he's in the world. I'm not deceived about this. Sometimes stuff takes change. Something takes automatic. I know God's still working and I'm good. And if God doesn't work it out for me, I'm even better off. Because he's the Lord of my life. Some people go ahead and take what they want. Jesus not be Lord for 15 minutes. How are we going? 
It said when they could not come nigh unto him, everybody went home. <laughs> Press, they, they uncovered the roof where he was, and when they had broken it up, they, they let down the bed wherein the sick of palsy lay. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven. Luke said it this way. And when they could not find a way, <laughs> but they could not find by what way they might bring him in because the multitude, they went upon the housetop and led him down through the tiles with his couch in the midst before Jesus. You know, now it's your job, just get him to Jesus. It's not your job to change them. It's not your job to change your neighbor. It's not your job to change your kids. It's not, it is your job to change your clothes now. I won't tell you that. Brother Willis said he'll never wake you up and tell you to put your clothes on. He'll never tell you to wake up and shave. He'll never tell you that. He'll never tell you that. People waiting to be led. Well, the Lord ain't told me to give 100. <laughs> well, he may have didn't if you ain't got it. <laughs> if you got it, I don't. It's a, it, it's a sin in my mind to borrow money to give to the Lord. Why? Because you become, a, you become a slave to the lender. You're going to make me a slave to serve my Lord? That don't make sense. That doesn't make sense. You make a commitment, do something. If that is forgiven, you say, I'm going to get stuff right in my life. I'm going to find people that's wrong me and, 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 with it, and get it straight and get through with it. Amen. You know, a lot of people hold on to stuff for many, many years and hear what I'm saying, hear what I'm saying, and they hold on to it. You know why? They got the whatsoever and between God and them, instead of having the G, he shall supply all, shall supply all, shall supply all your needs, the whatevers. And we think, it, come on, your, your, your blessing lays not in a man. Your blessing lays within God. Will God use a man? Well, surely he will use a man. But I want God to use a man that his heart is toward God. We're moving together and going together. You know what they did? And let me tell you what, doing the whatsoever is not always easy. They got to the place they had to get a plan, and they said, we're going to tear the roof off this thing. <laughs> now, just let y'all know, now, there's a door there, there's a door there, there's a door there, there's a couple over here, so y'all don't have to tear the roof down. We can get in, can you say amen? But see, what really, what he's trying to tell us, what he's trying to tell us is that somebody was involved in somebody's life and they seen the whatever happened to get them to Jesus. You may have to go back. You may have, you may have to send them a card. You may have to pray for them. You, 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 you may, it may have to take four of you. <laughs> you know, you can go see somebody and they see, you see them in church and know where they are. You can go by there because you know they work there. Go by there and, and then somebody else from church can go by there and see them. Get four of us, we bring them to church, can you tell me? Yeah, a lot of people never came to Jesus because nobody brought them. A lot of people never came to Jesus because somebody didn't, didn't, get, didn't get through the obstructions, didn't, didn't get through what, what's wrong. And it says that the multitude, now you got multitude, you got people, and they had to climb up, and they let him down. Now listen to me, and I'm getting close. You know they didn't let him down in the bathroom. They didn't let him down in the kitchen. You know, that's some places we'd rather let him down in the kitchen because we know what goes on in the kitchen. <laughs> you know what they did? They had perfect understanding where he needed to be. You get him to Jesus and Jesus do the rest. Do your part, take off the roof, do it. You go by, pray for him, send him, whatever you need. Do the whatsoever and leave it to Jesus, can you say? And sometimes you may have to humble yourself. I don't do that, Brother Jerry, you know. I don't believe the Lord wants me to beg. Whatever the Lord wants me to do, I do. I have cried and begged people to give their life to the Lord, literally. And they didn't do it. I've done the whatever. But, Brother Steve, I've not done the whatever in every place that I should and could have. Amen? Don't you stand with me this morning? Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes, you know, you, 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 have, you have to do whatever it takes, you know what I mean? You know, I was a kid one time, if you can believe that. I know some of you said it wasn't that long ago. <laughs> and when we was kids, sister, we had to do whatever it was to play. We had to do whatever it is to make our day. We, our, my mother worked, and so we had to kind of entertain our, ourselves, amen. I had a, as a kid, we used to 
go to the dam and to the river dam, and we'd go down to the river. We'd go to the river, and we'd walk probably three, four, five miles. I, I'm not sure how far it was. It's, it wasn't nothing for a kid. It was a good thing. I'd be barefoot, and I'd have on black pair of sandals when I get back, walking on that black top. No, you don't know what I'm talking about. And one time, I got me a stick horse. I rode that stick horse around that stick horse about this tall. I rode that stick horse to it was about that tall. I drug it up. I drug it up. I rode it down to the dam one day, and somebody stole it, and I had to walk back. <laughs> Worst day of my life. I won't tell you this morning, some of it looked like it wasn't good. Somebody looked like you come in on the short, short end of the stick. Some of it looked like it didn't work out. But let me tell you, don't, don't let past experiences take you for your next experience in the Lord. I said, Brother Jerry, you know, I, I went to church and I've done this, but, but you ever been in a place to really do the whatever? So I'm going to do whatever you want me to do. Lord, I want to give whatever you want me to do. Lord, I want to feel like you want me to feel. Whatever you want me to feel, that's going to feel. You know, it, it's really a maturing up. And the whatever is, is to help people. Now, God didn't ask us to pack nobody's bed around. He didn't ask you, but don't go tear the roof off. But he did say, come unto me. And you send them to him. And do the whatsoever. We, we've done the whatsoever. We, we've tried to get even in life whatsoever it took to get them. You stayed mad about it uh, until you had a chance to bring it up. Whatsoever. Release that and let that go. You got to get through people and religion and things. You got to let that go. Whatever it takes for you to get to that place. Say, I'm going to do whatever, Lord. People who lie, manipulate, do all those things. And have no fault with what? Getting whatever they want. So how many things is possible? All things are possible. He says all things. He, he supplies all our need. And let us do whatever for the master. Amen. Father, we just come to you in Jesus' name. We just thank you, Lord God, for your word. We just thank you, Father God, that we can be in that place. And Father, I know the whatever just for each and every individual. And many of us is the same. But we just ask you, Father God, to touch us, that we learn to do whatever, be pleasing to you. And that you shall supply all, Father, whatever. So supply it through the midst of people and things and sickness and disease. Through lack, Father God. And even through our abundance, Lord, we ask you to touch us. If we just may stay under your hand, Lord, even when all things are good, when all things are blessed, when all things are great. That we know that you're just as important today. And we thank you today, Father God, that all things working out. And we thank you, Father God, for being the whatsoever we need in our hour. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Give the Lord a big hand clap of praise. Amen.